Right, welcome grade nines to our last financial maths video. We're going to be looking here at using our formulas that we've learned over the past couple of days and how we can use a little bit of algebra to solve problems with those. Okay, so these are the three formulas that we've encountered, but the most important two are your two A formulas. And remember the difference between the two is the location of N, our time. N is inside the bracket. We're multiplying it by some in simple interest. And then compound interest N is outside the bracket. And we are raising it to the exponent of N. Remember, both of these give you an accumulated a total amount at the end of the investment. Where simple interest is our principal multiplied by interest rate multiplied by the time. And we're going to see that this formula is quite helpful in some of today's problems. But you can use your 2A formulas for all of the problem. As we said earlier, today we're going to need a little bit of algebra as well to use these formulas because we're going to have to work backwards to find other letters besides A. Okay, so we're going to read now, and as we read through this problem, let's try and identify the given information and what letters that represents. So we've got a loan from First National Bank. Joshua is going to repay this loan back after three years. So that three years is going to represent our time, our N value, with a payment of 30,800 Rand. So in a loan, our payment is an A value. That's the total amount. Inside that 30,000 is his loan plus the interest that he was charged. Now, the rate of interest was 18% per annum, simple interest for the duration of the loan. Determine the value of his original loan. His original loan at the beginning is a P value. So because we see that it's simple interest and we were given an A value, we're going to use the formula A is equal to P 1 plus I times N. Now let's go and see what information we're given. Well, in this case, we know the A value is 30,800 Rand. We are asked to find his original loan. So that represents the letter P. Our N, our time period here is three years. And our interest rate is 18% which is 0, 0,18. So if we go and substitute all of these values, this is now what we're faced with. We've got one unknown, the principal amount. So how are we going to work backwards? Well, notice here that we've got the principal multiplied by this bracket. Now, you can go and work out what the value of this bracket is on your calculator. And we see that this bracket can be simplified as 1,54. So now, if we want to get P by itself, we're going to do the opposite of multiplication, which is to go and divide. So I'm dividing both sides by 1,54. And if I divide this right-hand side by 1,54, I'm going to be left just with P. So I can take that and put it into my calculator. And we see that our calculator tells us that 20,000 Rand is the p-value. What does that mean in the context of the story? That Joshua's original loan was worth 20,000 Rand. So Takilani is borrowing 12,500 Rand from Nice Bank to buy a drum kit. Well, remember, when we borrow money, that's at the beginning, that's at the start of my loan. So this is a principal amount, 12500 The interest rate is charged at 9.2% simple interest. So think of your simple interest formula. And Takani pays back the principal amount plus 2,300 Rand interest. How long was the loan period? So I can spot here that 9,2%, well, that's going to give me my I. And this amount, 2,300, is the interest that she's paid. The most straightforward way, because we are given just interest, we have the formula that says the simple interest is the present value multiplied by the interest rate multiplied by time. And in this case, we know that the simple interest is 2,300 Rand. The principal amount was 12,500 Rand. Our interest rate was 9,2 over 100, which is 0, 0,092. And the time period, well, that's what we want to know. How long was the loan period? 
Okay, so we're going to write down our SIPIT formula to make substitution, to make sure that we don't make mistakes with our substitution. Our simple interest is 2,300 Rand, the principal 12,500 Rand, multiplied by the interest rate, which is 0 0.092, multiplied by our time. Now you can just go and divide 2,300 by this, or we can work out, well, what is that going to be? And we see that this is 1,150 times by the time. So now, to get time by itself, we can take 2,300 and divide it by 1,150 to find our time. And we see in our calculator that the time is 2. So therefore, the loan was for 2 years. Now, we could have done example B with the A formula. So if we want to use the A formula, then we need to know what is the total amount that Takalani has repaid her loan. It's not 2,300. That is the extra. That's the interest that she's paid on top. So the amount that she has repaid is going to be 12,500, her original loan, plus the interest, which gives us 14,800 rand. So this is my A value here. The principal, well, that's still 12,500. The interest rate is 0, 0.092, just like before. And the time is what we need to know. Now, how are we going to solve for N? And I want to take you back to what you did earlier this year in terms of solving an equation when we have only one unknown letter. If you think about what's been done to n, the first thing according to bod mass that happens to n is that we multiply it by 0, 0,092. After we multiply by 0, 0,092 we add 1 and then we multiply it by 12,500 and the answer is 14,800. So if we want to get back to n, we just reverse these operations. We divide by 12,500. We're going to subtract 1. And then we're going to divide by 0, 0,092. Let's see what that looks like in the algebra. So our first step is to divide both sides by 12,500. And that's going to leave me with 1 plus 0, 0,092 times n. If we simplify 14,800 divided by 12,500, we get 1, 1,184. So now we can see the second step, which is to subtract 1 from both sides. And that's going to leave me with 0, 0,092 times n. How do I get n by itself? I divide both sides by 0, 0,092. That will leave me just with n. So if we take 0, 0,184 divided by 0, 0,092, our calculator tells us that that is 2. Therefore, the loan was for 2 years. So you don't have to learn all three formulas. You can use your A formula here. Okay, example C, Lauren invests 1,340 Rand. So that's going to be at the beginning. That's an initial investment. We're working with simple interest per year. After 8 years, so that's my time period, her investment is worth 2,566 Rand. So this is now the total amount of money in my bank account. Determine the interest rate. So we want to know what R is. But first, we want to find out what I is. And then we can convert it to R. Remember, R is always a percentage. But our formula works with I. And we want that the rate correct to two decimal places. So if we see the letters here, we've got simple interest. And we can see that we're going to work with the formula because of A, P, 1 plus I times N. Okay, now if we look at what we've got here, my, her total value of her bank account is 2,566 Rand. The principal is 1,340 Rand. The interest rate is what we want to work out. The time period is 8 years. So we replace A with 2,566, the p-value with 1,340, 1 plus an unknown i, but we are multiplying that by 8. 
Okay, again, do you notice the algebra of what we're doing here? We've got one letter that we want to try and solve. And if we think about what's happening to that letter I, the first thing is it gets multiplied by 8. Then we add 1. Then we multiply it by 1,340. And we get the answer of 2,566 rand. Now we need to reverse that process. We're going to divide by 1,340. We're going to subtract 1. And then we're going to divide by 8. So let's look at the algebra. 2,566 divided by 1,340 is equal to 1 plus i times 8. Well, that's 8i. From this fraction, you don't need to work with the decimals here, but if you do, you need to keep all of them on your calculator. You can't round off early. This is going to be 1 plus 8i. So to get i now, we want to first, before we divide by 8, we want to subtract 1. Well, if I subtract 1 here, I'm going to have 0, 0,9149. And that's going to be equal to 8i. So then I need to take this number and I need to divide both sides by 8. So now if we use our calculator carefully here, we're going to subtract 1. And then if we use our answer key, we can say, well, we're going to divide that by 8. Zero comma one one four three six is equal to my i, but then we need to go and look at the rates. So if we multiply that by a hundred, we get four three six is my r value, and then we go and round that off to two decimal places. So this is going to become four four percent is equal to my rate. So therefore, the rate of interest. was 11,44%. Okay, example T. Clinton borrows a certain amount of money. Okay, so we don't know how much he's borrowing, but remember that borrowing happens at the beginning of a loan. So that's a p-value. Whatever that is, we're going to be looking for that p-value. And he pays back this principal amount and the interest after five years. So five years is my time period. Calculate the simple interest rate. So we want to know what R is, which remember, we're going to have to first find out what the interest rate is, I. And he's paid back double that original amount. Well, remember, the thing that you pay back is your A value. Now, this seems like a difficult problem. They've only given me one number here. They've only given me the time, which is five years. So... If we see the letters we've written down, we're going to be using our A formula again. If we look at what we can represent. So let's look at what we can fill in. And at first, it looks like we can only fill in that the time is 5. And we want to know what the interest rate is. So what do I know about A and P? Now, the one thing you can't do here is just to say, well, I'm going to make a guess and say he borrowed 5,000 Rand. You don't know that he borrowed that much. We want to work here. In general, we want to know for a certain amount of money. Now, we've learned in grade 8 and earlier this year that often when we have an unknown in a word problem, we can use X to represent that, um, that original unknown. So if we represent P as X... Then what is A in terms of X? Well, this is double that amount, 2X. You can use numbers to get your head into this. If this was 5,000, this would be 2 times 5,000, 10,000. But we can't actually solve this problem by substituting in numbers, guesses. Now, this might seem like this is an, we've got two unknowns here. This is impossible. Let's go ahead. Let's persevere with the algebra. So my A value is 2x. My P value is just x. 1 plus my interest rate I don't know, but my time is 5 years. Now, we're going to follow exactly the same process as what we did here with example C. We're going to reverse the order of operations. And so the first thing that we do here 
is we're going to divide both sides by x. Now, look at the wonders of algebra. Can we see here that this x divided by itself is going to be a 1? And if you had chosen numbers, for example, 10,000 and 20,000, when you divide 20,000 by 10,000, you get 2. No matter what numbers you chose for x, as a guess, you're always going to get 2 is equal to 1 plus 5i. But we had to use x because they spoke about a certain amount of money. Now from here, we can subtract 1 from both sides. Now we divide both sides by 5. 1 divided by 5 is 0, 0,2 gives me i. Well, that's my decimal, so if I multiply it by 100, 20% is the rate. So therefore, Clinton needed an interest rate of 20% if he wants to double his money in five years using simple interest. It's also possible, and I'll leave you to go and try this by yourself, to do this problem with SIPIT. And in SIPIT, if I want to double my money, well, if I start off with an unknown principle, and I'm still working over five years, if I want to double my interest, then my principle needs to be the same as my simple interest. Now, I want you to go and try and do this here, but you see that your I value is exactly the same, 0, 0,2. So Emma is starting up a cupcake business and she's borrowing money from Dixon's Dynamite Deals. She's paying back her loan after 10 years. There's my time period, that's N. By making a payment of 80,000 Rand. Now remember, your payment is always going to be the original loan plus interest, so therefore it's an A value. The interest is compounded and fixed at 14,6% per annum. So there's this word. This is the first problem where we're dealing with compound interest. And now I'm given an interest rate of 14,6. How much did she borrow? So we see now that we've only got one formula for compound interest. Where n is my exponent. In this problem, the a value, the amount she repays is 80,000 rand. The loan amount, well, that's what we want to know. The interest rate is 14,6 over 100, which is 0, 0,146. And then the time period is 10 years. So if we substitute, we get that picture there. Now, how are we going to solve for P? Well, look at what the operation is. This is exactly the same as we had with simple interest in example A. And so all we did is we worked out the bracket and then we divided there by the bracket. So if you type this bracket into your calculator, we see that that bracket is 3,9070. You need to have all of these decimal places. So now how are you going to work out your principal? Well, you're going to take 80,000 and you're going to divide it by what that value of the bracket is to get p by itself. Don't round off your decimals, otherwise you're going to get a slightly different answer. You can use the answer key on your calculator. If you've just worked out that, then you can divide it by the answer. And you can see that the p value was 20,475 Rand and 94 cents, rounding it off to two decimal places. Notice that this has to be much less than she pays back because the bank is this Dixon's Dynamite Deals has been charging her interest for 10 years. So she's added on a lot of interest over 10 years to her original loan. Now, if you want to be a little bit safer with all these decimals, then you can do this in one step where we take 80,000 Rand and with your fancy calculators, you can type in exactly what we had in that bracket and that's going to give me my p-value so we see that we get exactly the same answer on our calculator if we just keep it in the bracket and with an exponent of 10 don't forget about your exponent of 10 okay our last example today 
Timber lends 12,000 Rand to his friend to buy a car. So remember that the loan happens at the beginning. He requires the loan to be repaid after five years. So there's my time period in with a payment of 22,109 Rand 22. So remember your payment is the loan plus your interest. Well, that's your A value. What is the compound rate that he was charged? So we're going to use our compound interest formula. The accumulated amount is 22,109 Rand and 22 cents. The principal, the original loan, was 12,000 Rand. The interest is what we want to find out, the interest rate, and the time period is five years. Okay, so now that we've substituted into our formula, let's think about the algebra of what's happening here. And again, we want to try and think about, because we've only got one letter we don't know, we want to try and reverse algebraically what's happening to I. So let's think about it. The first thing that would happen to I is that we would add 1 to it, because that's inside the bracket. Then, remember, whether you learned bod mass or bed mass, you need to do exponents before your multiplication. In other words, the next operation that we're going to do is we're going to raise that to the fifth power. And only after that would we multiply by 12,000 to get the answer of 22,109.22. Now, let's think about reversing these operations. The opposite of multiplying is to divide by 12,000. Now, the opposite of raising to the fifth power is the fifth root of whatever number we get. And then, finally, we subtract 1. So let's look algebraically. Our first step is to divide both sides by 12,000 Rand. That leaves us with 1 plus i to the power of 5. So now, in order to undo this, we're going to take the fifth root of both sides. On your calculator, here in the yellow key, so we need to use the shift, and then we can choose the fifth root. And we're going to work here with exactly what we've got there, so we don't introduce rounding error. So we see when we take the fifth root, we get 1, 1,12999 dot dot dot. So now that we've done this, the last step is to minus 1. Well, if you minus 1, you can have 0, 1, 2, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. And that's equal to the interest rate, except that this is the decimals. So if we multiply this by 100, we're going to get 12,9999%. So therefore, the interest rate was 13%. Whether you round this to one decimal or two decimal places, it needs to go up to 13%. Okay, that's probably the most challenging example here. And the biggest step is the opposite of the fifth power, which is the fifth root. Okay, you need to go and do exercise six now. It's the last exercise in financial maths. Please make sure you are comfortable with everything that we have done up until this point. You need to talk to your teacher if there's concepts you're not clear with. Good luck.